Welcome back, everybody, to We Are TPM with your hosts once again, Kyle Teixeira. And to the next to me on my right over here is Mr. John Teixeira. This week, we are back to discuss repairs and remedies and how they affect rental properties, tenants, and landlords. So repairs and remedies. If you guys have any questions, you interested in anything we talk about in this podcast or just want to, you know, hear our voices on a different format, like phone call or something, give us a call, 817-818-9039. Shoot us an email at show me the money at wertpm.com. Well, let's get into it, John. The um, repairs and remedies is something that probably most landlords and tenants don't hear about. Um, the reason I bring it up as a topic, or we're, we're going to talk about this today, is it is a, at least in the state of Texas, it's a legal standing for, I guess, bringing suit from a tenant, which isn't why we're, we're discussing it. I guess, uh, well, no, the reason the reason I want to discuss it is the the aspect of tenants and landlords is a common problem uh, where not keeping repairs and rent payments separate. Right. It's this mindset that happens a lot um, where, you know, repairs happen, blah, blah, blah. Tenants aren't happy. Landlord, maybe not happy. Things things happen in the property. Maybe it relates to water bills. Maybe it relates to um, landscaping or something like that or a repair that wasn't done or an AC bill. There an AC that's old that causes the electric bill to get really high. A whole bunch of stuff that can happen in a rental property. and repairs and remedies is kind of an avenue that can be taken to deal with that issue. So it is. What are we talking about again? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, um, yeah, you, you know what, Kyle? There's two aspects to this, right? And both parties do it. There's an aspect that the owner has, and a perspective that the owner has, and then there's a perspective of the tenant. And then, and then we're property managers in the middle, so we kind of. We kind of have an even different perspective. Like we're trying to do right by everybody to make sure we have great tenants that stay in the home and continue paying their rent. But we also need to make sure we're we are operating or managing the asset p- appropriately for the homeowner, right? So we're kind of like in the middle, watching both sides make these bad decisions regarding this exact subject. And the thing that people do that both owners and tenants have a have a tendency to do is to mix the two up with um, with rent payments in some fashion. So what I mean by that is owners will say, well, they're behind on their rent, so I'm not fixing that sink until, until they get caught up. And on the flip side, a tenant will say, well, I'm not paying my rent until they fix the sink that hasn't been fixed, right? That kind of stuff. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Because, I mean, we previously talked mm. about evictions, right? We did it, recently did an episode about evictions where we kind of skated how these things can get involved. So this is kind of the other end of it. Um, but the, I think the problem is knowledge, right? And because and, – and I'm going to bring mm. up a separate point later, but – the knowledge is like what you can do, what you can do legally, what your lease contract says. Uh, the perspective on both sides is so commonly filled because these issues are common, right? These these are not an uncommon issue, but so much emotion gets involved in it. And on a legal basis and on a lease basis and how it should really go is well, one, these two things in most cases are separate, but I say knowledge because knowing how to deal with it. How to deal with it and the difference because like let's say what you just talked about, right? The tenant, you have two perspectives. You have the landlord says, I'm not fixing that sink because you haven't paid your rent. And the tenant says, I'm not paying my rent because you haven't fixed that sink. Well, and we're going to stick to Texas here. The way most leases are written and the most the way property code is written in, in Texas, at least, that we operate off of, The landlord in that scenario, that exact scenario, the landlord is actually not in the wrong in most cases. So this doesn't apply to everything, but in most cases, as long as the condition doesn't affect the habitability of the home, then the landlord doesn't have to fix it until you're current on your rent. Now, I'm not saying that's how it should go. Um, I think most property managers like us try to treat these things separately to not cause these big clouds of, of issues. And then you have the debatable fact of what's hab- what causes ha- habitability. Well, if I can't use my kitchen sink, I can't wash my dishes, which yeah, means my dishes aren't, which yeah. aren't clean. And then that can cause 
sickness. I mean, yep. you can get into ridiculous conversations about it. Um, in a factual <laughs> statement, like, what, does having a kitchen sink is that a is that a feature of the home versus something that is required to live in it? Well, well, here's the thing. To your point, the collection of rent should be mutually exclusive to the maintenance of maintaining of the property, and whether you have somebody paying you rent or not, the property still needs to be maintained. Now, if the tenant is doing some negligence and damaging the property, that's entirely different. Correct. But if the property needs to be maintained on a regular basis, what does it really matter whether you've got a uh, um, a, a tenant that's paying right now on their way out in the middle of eviction, um, whether it's vacant, all of those things don't matter. The property still needs to be repaired, maintained, looked after, and properly uh, managed. Yeah, because all these things can get cloudy, right? Like, so another one that's common is, especially here in Texas, is uh, HVAC units, right? So you get these HVAC units where the compressor's really old and when those things get old and still work, there's a lot of times where they start pulling insane wattages to run. Mm. Just because it's running, it's just, you know, like say a tenant's electricity bill should could be two, 300 bucks, and it goes up to eight, 900 bucks a month in the summer because of how much the AC is being used and the draw on that unit. Well, this is where you get muddy, right? Like, okay, well, the AC's running, so the landlord technically doesn't have to do it. But now the tenant's saying, well, I can't afford my rent because my electricity bill is 800 bucks um, or whatever it may be. You know, the reality of the situation is that the wow, you these you have to deal with these things in a certain way, right? Because the tenant has a financial point. You really chose a complicated analogy there, didn't you? I did, because this is one of the most common. Is like because the electricity bill is responsibility of the tenant in most cases, and the uh, landlord's providing a working HVAC unit, right? So, but then we get into the conversations of okay, well, would you if you were this if you're the landlord. Do you think this tenant's going to renew their lease knowing they're going to have another summer like this the next summer? Probably not, right? So you have to take all those things into consideration. But like I said before, on a on a legal lease basis in most cases, then the landlord really doesn't have to do anything. So this is where um, a lot of these cases get brought up because repairs and remedies as a well before i say this right the we are not attorneys or lawyers this, <laughs> is, this is not legal advice do not take this legal advice um but repairs and remedies is a is a coined term in property management here in texas for a suit that can be brought by the tenant against the landlord with justification for withholding rent and this hvac example is a horrible example because you're probably not going to win that one um but there is other ones like yeah, like I mean, leaks, right? So leaks yeah. is another common one. Yep. You want a leak analogy? Since sure, you go can, for it. You like leak? Get a leaking. I don't know. What do you got? We got a leaking. Uh, Let's say the laundry valve. We had a slab leak, right? Oh, slab leak go. under the slab. Um, you know, they notified you of it. Water bill's really high. Uh, and in most cases, once that leak's fixed. Most cities that don't suck will, or most water departments don't suck, will take that, you know, repair, take that invoice, see when it was done, look at current usage and give the, give the tenant a credit on their water bill towards that water adjustment, right? So a lot of cases, the water department will deal with it. Um, but then it technically falls on the landlord after that, or the homeowner, to pay for any increased uses of water due to a failure in one of the home systems, I think the point that you're really trying to make is that that while people confuse these two things together, that if you're an owner, you shouldn't, and you should treat them mutually exclusively, right? And if you're a tenant and you're having trouble getting a, a homeowner, landlord, property manager to do something that you feel needs to be done that was not tenant negligence, right, then you're only and they're not doing it, and they're refusing to do it, then your only recourse is to take them to court. And withholding rent, if you end up in eviction court, which happens all the time, doesn't it? If you end up in eviction court because you refuse to pay rent because the landlord wouldn't do something, the judge is going to look at you and say, well, this isn't the court for that. This isn't the proceeding for that. This isn't a, an eviction proceeding 
that that deals with rent collection and possession of the home, and you're gonna, now going to lose possession of your home and get a judgment against you because instead of instead of what's the alternative, Kyle? What should they have done? Well, a repairs and remedies case because what you're what you're talking about is really the two sides of tenant and landlord suits, right? Like a landlord can bring an eviction suit against a tenant, and in most cases, that's really all they can bring against the current tenant, right? And the tenant can bring in repairs and remedies, right? So the landlord has to go through a legal notice process and these steps to do an eviction properly, right? We've said that before. Well, on the other side of it, the tenant has to go through a notice process and steps before they can bring a repairs and remedies case. But we have seen it dozens, if not <clears throat> hundreds of times, where the tenant just wants to to bring this up in court and have a judge decide, well, they're they're talking about it like this is a legal this suit. This is an eviction proceeding. It's not a civil trial about about the repairs. Yeah. Right? And I mean, maybe and you'll so, get lucky and a judge will hear you out for that. But in reality, good luck with those numbers adding up because even if the judge determines, yeah, they owe you a thousand bucks, but now you owe them two grand in rent. Well, now you just get a lower judgment. You know, you still didn't pay your rent. So... So if you're a tenant and you're having the your tenant I described and you're having trouble, they need to go down to the courthouse and file a suit, the appropriate suit that you're calling no, re- it, it, repairs well, and remedies, right? I'm not going to make that suggestion because there are steps just like there is steps in an eviction where you have to send a notice and all those things. And no, no, no. What I'm saying is – all I'm saying is that, that that's the recourse. That's the recourse they have to to – Instead of bringing it into an eviction courtroom is all I'm saying. That yeah. was that or was send the, the notice and yeah. send justification because so commonly we see we see this issue a lot and it's so much I say there's so much emotion in it because like these these this is a business, right? So you can't come to a landlord and say, I feel like you know, I deserve a credit for this or I feel like this is your responsibility and that's all you say. Well, what's their responsibility? Is $800 their responsibility? Is $200? Like, what What are you going to come to that eviction court with? Well, they didn't credit me for this, blah, 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 but I didn't even ask for a number. You know, those things need to be considered because this is common. And, I mean, how often do we deal with, I guess, issues, these types of issues? As far as just directly with the tenant and the landlord, well, we're we're constantly dealing with them directly with the tenant and the landlord. That's what we do, right? We 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 do everything we can to make sure that these things don't get all the way to a courtroom. Some people are just stubborn, right? Yeah. And that's where they want it to be. They don't want to deal with you for whatever reason. They want to deal. They think that in a courtroom that they're going to get one over on you. And people don't understand how these proceedings work. These proceedings work in a very specific way for a very specific reason. And you can't just go willy-nilly, you know, expecting to go into a courtroom, making a case and having, you know, somebody side with you and and, and get your way to all, all the things that you need all of a sudden are going to happen because the judge said so. Yeah, we, we, we bring this up because <clears throat> it is important to both sides. Like, we aren't just sitting here talking about this so that tenants know what to do. That's not our intention we've, at all. Landlords need to know what to do, too. We've fired owners over this issue. Yeah, right? because I mean, well, cause they, everybody's got a responsibility. Our job is to kind of hold everybody to their responsibility. Right. Well, even if <clears throat> you're doing it right, and not making your payments like, okay, well, if you think the landlord owes you $600 towards your water, so you withhold rent for three months until you land in a courtroom, even if the judge sides with you at the 600 you've probably racked up more than that in late fees <clears throat> and eviction filing fees. And sure, now you get your $600 credit and you owe them 800 bucks in late fees. Like, that doesn't make any sense. So you have to you know, know your responsibilities and still make your payments accordingly. Um, unless you go through the proper channels, right? I mean, because, and I say we see this a lot because we deal with this a lot and we deal with it in in eviction court a lot. Um, well, we've we get been to hundreds of eviction courts, right? How many times have we dealt with a repairs and remedies case? Well, I don't know about hundreds, but we've never dealt with a repairs and remedies case. I mean, we have, we have. In the court, in, in, in the a court, court of law, how many times have we dealt with a repair and remedies case? Well, I actually know of two, but yes, two. They were actually brought against us. Yes. Did you do them? No. That's what I'm saying. Uh, no, you're thinking of small claims after the fact. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> of a current tenant, repairs yes. and remedies has never occurred. And that's a mm. testament to, I you're guess right. a, that's a testament to how we deal with it. But it's also a testament to how 
common it is for these things to just escalate, <clears throat> you know, and on both ends it escalates. Um, escalates to a landlord not getting rent for two, say, a month or two, right? And tenant now realizing they didn't do it right and maybe they had it maybe they had a case at the beginning you know so i don't think it ever needs to land in the court of law for repairs and remedies i really don't if if both sides are operating accordingly we do a pretty good job of communicating with everybody so that that doesn't happen but not everybody does and and that's that's really your point is is don't don't hold back rent right don't hold back repairs for for the other right because it's just going to get people mad, angry, making the wrong decision, doing the wrong thing, and and end up and end up being punished in a way that they didn't intend or shouldn't be punished, right? You, you, it's funny you you were telling a story about one that happened to you recently, somebody that we evicted recently that was holding back rent for for something that they they thought was unfair and and it really wasn't. We really had treated them very fairly. But they wanted to go to court and be stubborn and go to court to be able to tell a judge about it and complain to a judge when that wasn't the place for it. And so now this person has, they have now punished themselves. Like instead of paying the rent and then going through some other more reasonable process to learn what what their fate was, they chose to go through eviction process instead and now have an eviction on their record and a judgment on their record when they had every ability to pay the and and desire to pay the rent. They just wanted to go to court. Yeah, I mean, they, they tried to use the, an eviction judge as a mediator, essentially, yeah. right? And it so like, work. hey, I have the money for rent and I'm withholding it for these reasons, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, evictions filings are public record. A judgment is public record. A release is public record. Like your future rental applications, it will now show up on. Um, that does affect people, you know, and that wasn't, that's not the way to do it. Um, I've, th this is actually something that at least Tarrant County provides <laughs> mediation services that you can avoid all of this, even evictions by, you know, hiring a mediator for a way smaller fee. Um, it's actually cheaper than even eviction filings, but, you know, never had anyone go that route. So people, and that's why I bring this up that, um, I've seen single landlords a lot in court with a re repair and remedies cases. Um, it, and it's really just comes down to, I mean, a lot of it's lack of communication, but lack of knowledge of the responsibilities on both sides. Cause they really are on both sides. <laughs> and yeah. as landlords, it's important to know that. And we have to coach, you know, we coach our clients on this a lot that it is important to know what you actually are liable for and what you should be doing. Um, you know, there's scenarios where it's gray, right? It's like, okay, well, technically this happened. Is it really on the tenant or the landlord? Maybe you offer to split it, you know, stuff like that. But there are legal standings in a lot of these cases. Um, the most common one I've seen against a landlord in court like not ours but just watching other cases is like if a landlord doesn't have enough money for an hvac unit so the tent and it's the middle of summer and the tenant's like well i bought one and withheld that from my rent well that's a friggin that's a solid case for the tenant right um and in in a lot of times i've seen that brought up in eviction right so they didn't go through the proper process and now they're getting evicted and they probably paid six grand for an AC unit in a house they're about to get kicked out of. Um, I mean, in that scenario, they probably don't lose that eviction suit, but the law says they still lose it, right? So. Well, yeah, that's not what they're there for. They're there for non-payment of rent. So um, a lot of things can happen in that proceeding. It can be, you know, the the landlord can be given their their judgment um they can reset it they can agree to reset it right then and there sometimes um every judge will handle things a little bit differently I believe but they can bring a counter suit you know not the day of court yep. but you know people love being last minute but yep. uh, <laughs> but, uh, but but to your point they're all emotional decisions so um and and we we talk about fear-based decisions we talk about emotional decisions they're usually not good Right? They usually don't end in a good result when you make emotional decisions. And that's what, both in both of these scenarios that we're talking about right now, that's what both owners and tenants have a tendency to do. They do. And it's the biggest conflict and uh, financial conflict I see on both sides is these, these types of scenarios. Because, like, it's a tug and pull. Like, say you owe the landlord, four, you're withholding four grand in rent. 
and they can't afford a five grand AC unit. And they're like, well, if you pay me the rent, I can afford the unit. And the tenant's like, well, if you, I'm withholding the rent because you won't replace the unit. You know, these, these things really do happen. Having a property manager in between can make that you know, go a lot better because there's legal requirements for the property manager too. So like in these emergency scenarios, I don't want to advertise this, but like that AC unit, we're going to have to put the bill and try to get it back from the landlord because we have a legal requirement to get that tenant in AC, right? Regardless of the financial conditions of our, of our owner. Um, and by the way, you know, we're skipping over tenant negligence, tenant res- responsibility, landlord liability insurance. All of those things are issues that, that, that are separate issues to be talked about when you're talking about repairs and remedies, right? And we're skipping over those things for the purposes of this conversation because that wasn't the purpose of this conversation was the purpose of this conversation was to get let's clear get clarity from both owners and tenants on what what you, the right thing to do is right and mm-hmm. and should you be doing this repair whether or not you're getting rent should you be withholding back rent whether or not this repair is getting done those are common emotional decisions that are made all the time and they're usually made without the proper knowledge like you said Mm -hmm. at the beginning like if people just understood the process a little bit better and you know what we got this cool thing now i've been trying it every once in a while it's called google it's amazing it's amazing And, and if you use it if you know what this is, it's like a search engine, right? And you put whatever you want in. You could say, "Tell me about the eviction process," and it's amazing. So or you I mean, tell like Baird that or like ChatGPT that you're going to get <laughs> yeah, you some could, real you good could advice. You could do all that but, stuff. You know, yeah, again, you could not ask legal Alexa. Advice. You could ask Alexa. She could tell you all about it. I wouldn't advise that one. <clears throat> this, this, this is all for entertainment hey. purposes. But I'd be real surprised if Alexa gives you a valuable the, response the but. point is there is no lack of resources to find out exactly how to do this and if you're making emotional decisions and you're not even picking up your phone and doing a little bit of research to figure out how you should be doing it then then you're just doubling down on on a bad decision well and at least here in texas like in you know, negating any county laws that may add on to this in, in the state of texas property code outlines these two things in a very black and white manner, you know, when it comes to property codes, like with evictions, it's very cut and dry. It's, did you pay your rent or didn't you? With repair and remedies, it's like, it's, it's as cut and dry as that can be, right? These are the responsibilities laid out by both parties in your lease. Were they fulfilled? If not, here's the remedy, right? Um, that's the thing, you know, get, get the knowledge on both sides, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, as I, I wish, maybe not, I mean, I'm not going to say I wish every tenant knew that this legal process existed and because we don't want every tenant going that route. I don't think it needs to take that. But knowing what their responsibilities are and the landlord knowing their responsibilities on, in these scenarios is, is huge to getting a resolve, but also saving time, right? Because while we say this is an emotional decision, like, these, if, if these things take a month or two to get resolved and you're still in an emotional scenario, a landlord, like I said, is like, all right, we, we, we have a resolution now, but you still owe me late fees, right? Or, or whatever it may be. So it's another, another point of compromise. Yep. You have to deal with a lot of compromise in rentals. Yep. Um, but like, <laughs> like we said earlier, the landlord also doesn't have to repair some things if you aren't paying your rent. So the best way to operate, and we tell our tenants this, is no matter what we're dealing with, pay your rent. All conversations go better with a zero balance. Rent All of them. and repairs are mutually exclusive. Yes. Just Just operate that way and you'll be fine. That doesn't mean that you don't stay on top of your your landlord to do get a repair done, or you don't stay on top of a tenant to get rent paid. You do, but you got to do those things. And there's exceptions, but like, yeah, it's best to operate mutually exclusive. I mean, we've we've replaced HVAC units that have gone out in the middle of summer, and people that were and we were people in the who were eviction. like. You're, you're getting a constable at your house in three days. But by the way, the AC guy is going to be there t- <laughs> later today. Yeah. Um, That's but I, I mean. also need keys on Wednesday. Right. Regardless, so. of where, <laughs> regardless of where it is in that process, the property still needs to be maintained. Yeah, because the responsibilities are mutually <clears throat> exclusive. You, yeah. know? you know, Maybe you don't fix the shower 
uh, you know, two days before the constable shows up. But you know, <laughs> maybe shower was a bad example. Kitchen sink. I like. I like that. You know. One. You know what? Just to wrap this up, Kyle. You know what this also does. This. This. If you when you treat people right, they behave a little bit better. Hopefully, they don't always. But hopefully they do. So, for instance, let's use that example. That's a good example. Let's say AC goes out in the middle of the summer and you're a week away from evicting somebody. You already have the eviction and the constable is going to come out in five business days, which amounts to one week. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you find out the AC went out. Now, you could be, you know, a jerk and say, well, we're evicting you in a week anyways. You're supposed to be leaving anyway, so we're not fixing it. Right. And that person is just now they're already mad at you because you evicted them. They're probably mad at you for other things too, right? And now on the way out the door, they're going to beat the heck out of that property probably because now they're even more mad because they're sweating, right? They haven't had they haven't had sleep in a week because there's no AC, right? And this is just another thing to pile on top of. Or you can do like what we describe, get it done, be extremely human and empathetic about it and say, here you go. But by the way, when are you leaving? Yeah. Because the constable is coming on Wednesday. If you don't, now they can see that you you treated them like a human. You treated them with some care, even if you are still evicting them. And maybe on the way out, they'll treat your property a little bit nicer than they would have. Because the things pile up. It's, in all these scenarios, issues pile up on both sides, right? Like, like we've had a, a scenario that kind of went like that where there was a water leak. The landlord didn't want to fix. We're like, we have to fix this. So we, and they're like, well, the tenant's, tenant's not paying rent. They're being evicted. They have to be out by in two weeks. And we're like, well you know sure ignore the damage to your property for an active <laughs> leak uh, you know let's just ignore that for a second we still have a responsibility to fix it and you know get so we get it fixed and then the tenant has high water bills right wants a credit from the homeowner for their high water bills because oh, they still owe mess. the city and you know but because they're so pissed off to damage the property on their way out we well it's like you know okay well Give me your bills, whatever. All right. Well, you looks like yeah, you're owed six hundred bucks for a water bill. Here's a credit, and now you owe us four grand for all these damages. I mean, like, all those things didn't need to happen, right? You know, and plus the rent, that the back rent, and all those stuff, all that stuff. It it and, happens because of operations. And we right? did what we were hired to do there, and we didn't like it, right? So we, when we were all done and everything was all said and done, we just we went our separate ways with that home, homeowner because they were not willing to operate the way that we felt was um, was with integrity and in, in the way we, we thought you should do business. And, I mean, yeah, <clears throat> the, the responsibilities, like we said, the responsibilities on both sides, mm -hmm. um, you know, because emotions on both sides, we try to get rid of them, right? But they can cause problems, like damaging a property on the way out, you know, um, and on the landlord side, your own letting your own property get damaged <clears throat> due to, uh, you know, what, what's the word you used? I don't know. Negligence? <laughs> negligence or pride or whatever oh, so yeah um i'd rather let it get damaged and fix it like no, that it, <laughs> it should never do that um yeah. so those dollars add up for you too yeah so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but i mean if you i think uh you have anything else to say no i was gonna say i think we killed this uh i think we, we it's simple but it's it. very important i'd say it's probably it, mm. it's at the heart of prob of a lot of move outs I should say, you know, because the, it, it, the one point we didn't mention <clears throat> is as bad as that went, even when it gets resolved, if it was dealt with in a bad way, th th these things don't get forget. Do the tenants forget those things uh, generally? No. Nope. Do the landlords forget? No. Even if they resolved it, you know, tenants like, now I'm not renewing or now I'm going to be a pain about all these little things or, you know, things come from it. So, mm -hmm. um, So if you would like people like us to deal with these issues or be the mediator or really discuss anything in the repairs and remedies, evictions, any of that, give us a call 817-818-9039 or shoot us a long email with all your complaints and emotions. Just kidding. Shoot us an email. Show, Show me, me the, the money, money at wertpm.com and John and I are out. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.